uh, mainly the layout. This is one of the layouts where it's it's basically two single family homes that are attached to one another, right? So each unit's gonna have multiple floors. There's like a little unit above the garage too, but there's it's like it's screwed shut. And then good old stucco houses. I bet they got the Declaration of Independence in there, boys. Zenith, baby. I bet we plug that in that on the snow fight right up. I bet. It's going to have a separate basement, separate area uh, for laundry, which is good because I've talked about this before. Uh, shared laundry with multifamily tenants in the lower income space, the Section 8 space, folks. Uh, it's terrible. It's horrible. If you're a landlord, you don't want to deal with it. It's never fun fielding the call at your property management office when tenant A is upset because tenant B is stealing her panties. Welcome to the Investment Properties for Sales Show. Folks, they can sell an at or above list. We are going to provide you guys with complete transparency and education. We take you to the video tour. Won't wise to be giving it to you straight. All right, y'all, I got a treat. I got a treat for you today, folks. And this treat's got options, man. Life's like a box of chocolates. I don't even know. I don't think that's... I was going to do, like do like a thing there. Like a... What do they call those things? Ah, oh, Tyler, what do they call those things? Analogy. Thank you. I was going to do an analogy about you could pick many treats and you don't know what you're going to get or something, but I don't know. It didn't work. I tell you what. Let's just let's just talk about the property. How about that, okay? 518 Lake Ave, Elyria 44035, right? It could be a duplex, it could be a triplex, right? I think that's where I was trying to go with you got options with this treat, okay? What we have, folks, we have a duplex in the house building, right? The uh, house building. Each of the units are going to be three bedroom, one bath, right? And the footage you're seeing is of that vacant unit, right? And what I love about this, right? I love several things about this. Uh, mainly... The layout, this is one of the layouts where it's it's basically two single family homes that are attached to one another, right? So each unit's going to have multiple floors. It's going to have a separate basement, separate area uh, for laundry, which is good because I've talked about this before. Uh, shared laundry with multifamily tenants in the lower income space, the Section 8 space, folks. Uh, it's terrible. It's horrible. If you're a landlord, you don't want to deal with it. It's never fun fielding the call at your property management office when tenant A is upset because tenant B is stealing her panties. I wish I could tell you I made that up for shock value. I did not. That is a type of call that the Holton Wise office has received <laughs> literally multiple times from multiple people. Like, I can't tell you that it happens every day, but I can't also tell you that it almost never happens because it's like, it's, it's happened enough times on enough separate occasions where I can tell you that that's like a thing. That's actually a thing. Panty theft in the shared laundry room is an actual thing that landlords need to concern themselves with, right? So whenever you have the opportunity to avoid that shared laundry space, that's one of the things you get to avoid. Another thing you get to avoid is more frequent turnovers, right? Because it, it, it feels more like a single-family house. So you'll get higher rents, yes, which is good. We love that. Uh, but what's even more more important than the higher rents is tenants staying longer and having uh, fewer turnovers, right? Because turnovers are going to cost you some money, right? Like like this turnover, okay? You're probably going to drop, oh, I don't know, in the ballpark of like, you know, anywhere from like twelve to $20,000, uh, getting this thing like totally up to snuff, ready to go, rent ready, Section 8 rent ready, right? Like, you know, you got scuffs, you got nicks, you got broken things here, cleaning this out there, you know, you, you holes in the windows, all kinds of stuff, right? So by the time it's all said and done, you're spending somewhere between like twelve and $20,000, depending on how nice you want to make your unit, uh, to get it ready to rock and roll, right? So if you got to spend that kind of coin, folks, you want to do that as infrequently as possible like this particular unit i don't believe has been turned in like 10 maybe 15 years something like that that's what you want you want to be able to turn your units like once a decade and then keep people living there right and with a layout like this uh that's that's how you can achieve that kind of things right because you're in uh 
a situation where the tenants, it's very spacious. It feels like their own home. It's not something where they're fighting with their neighbor over sound or what the hell's going on in the laundry room, stuff like that, right? Uh, so that's what you really, really like, right? So $9.95 is going to be the market rent after you spend that money renovating the unit. The other unit also has like a long time month to month tenant. Uh, that tenant is only paying five fifty in rent, right? The uh, person who put that tenant in, I believe that person was the owner maybe like two owners ago, if, I, uh, if I'm correct on that one. Uh, they put them in and they just never increased their rents, right? So we got a lot of opportunity here. Uh, we can get that rent all the way up to nine ninety five. Do I think you want to go like exactly to nine ninety five with a 30 day notice after you buy it? Probably not, because I think at that point that tenant might, they might move out, right? Right? Uh, because that's such a huge increase. And you're going to be dealing with the same thing in that unit that you're dealing with in this unit, right? You're going to be dealing with a rental budget of probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 12 to 20K. So instead of dropping another 12 to 20K right now, what I would do, I'd probably increase the rent to like 800, maybe like 850. Huge, massive increase. Uh, but that person is not going to be able to find a comparable unit in 2023. Uh, so they'll probably be unhappy about paying more money. But guess what? They'll probably probably going to stay, right? So with that, you're getting almost uh, $2,000 a month in rent running this thing as a duplex, right? You're going to be getting like, it'd be like $1,990 in rent, right? Running this bad boy as a duplex, potentially only having to do any renovations on one of the units, right? But then here comes the other uh, little bonus little option, right? You see that footage right there, that garage, okay? Above that garage is actually a third unit. Now, that third unit is literally uninhabitable, and it's actually been screwed shut, right? Uh, like, we had to, I believe... We had to actually screw it shut to stay uh, in, in line with uh, the building department, right? Because it is completely not habitable, right? That's how uh, Holton Wise came to take this thing over. Uh, I believe that unit was put in there illegally, and it's just in, in total deplorable uh, conditions, right? So if you were to buy this, you do have the potential option uh, of going through the process with the building department and actually building that unit back out. But you're more or less, folks, going to start from scratch. So as far as like a budget for that little unit, you're looking at anywhere from like forty to $60,000, right? Uh, most of the time, I'd say it probably doesn't make sense, right? Because you're only going to get about seven fifty dollars in rent for it. Uh, it's probably in the Cleveland market a better idea for you to take that forty or sixty k and just utilize that as cash down on another full-fledged multifamily property as opposed to spending all that time and effort putting back together uh, an apartment above a garage. But uh, the option is there, so depending on you know, your plans, or maybe you're looking at this and you're a contractor yourself and you know you could beat that price down and you're familiar with the planning and the building and the zoning and all that jazz, uh, maybe that's an option you want to do. And if you did do that option, uh, feasibly here, we're looking at a total market rent for the whole thing as 2740 Me personally, I think the building probably makes the most sense in its current use, which is uh, that unit being totally shut off and it just being a duplex, bringing in almost $2,000 a month in rent but that option is there for you should you so choose to turn this sucker into a triplex uh in any way if you want to buy this particular property to utilize as a triplex or a duplex the process is going to be the same folks you're going to send your offers to my team sales at holtonwise.com if you want to pay cash that is great uh you're going to include your proof of or yeah your proof of funds uh with your email so be like yo man i'm interested in buying 518 lake i want to pay 95k here is my proof of funds uh 95k in the bank let's rock and roll and uh we'll reach back out to you from there if you want to finance this thing uh that's where it's going to get a little tricky because of the existence of uh the shutdown third unit i don't 100 percent know 
uh, how lenders are going to see uh, like deal with that, right? It's going to be kind of like a case by case basis. Every lender is going to take that a little bit differently, right? Because it does kind of pose a liability for them, right? So I would say cash offers will probably be preferred. We're not going to shut the door to financed offers, but uh, it's going to be on you, the potential buyer, to to really discuss. Uh, this deal with your lender, I suggest showing your lender this video because here's the deal, folks. Lenders, like, they'll give any breathing human being a pre-approval letter, right? You just reach out to Joe Blow Lender. Hey, man, I need a pre-approval. He's like, boom, there you go. There it is. They don't actually really do any uh, due diligence or... Uh, looking into your finances. They'll they'll give those letters to anybody, especially right now, folks. It's 2023. The interest rates have like doubled in the last year. Uh, lenders are literally like crawling, like, please give me clients. Like these people are going to like crawl and fight their way to get leads, right? So they'll they'll issue that uh, pre-approval to any warm-blooded human being, right? Because they're most lenders are probably desperate for business right now. It's a very, very, very tough time to be a lender, right? So because of that, because your boy Jay Wise here is not new to the biz, uh, this is not my first rodeo, so to speak. I know how to the process the game works here. So I'm not going to put much value into a boiler point boilerplate uh, pre-approval letter because I know y'all can get those from like any lender, especially in 2023. Uh, so I'm probably going to put your lender uh, through a series of questions uh, if we were to potentially go under contract on a uh, financed offer on this property because I know that most lenders aren't doing the due diligence it takes to see if they can actually push this thing through underwriting. So if you want to do financed offers, folks, uh, submit to us, sales at holdenwise.com, how much you want to pay. If you're financing, include that pre-approval letter and include the contact information for your lender. And I'm going to talk to your lender, make sure they watch this video, make sure they've actually sent this thing up the chain of command, talk to underwriting, and we have a reasonable chance of closing it, right? Because when we're trying to sell properties, y'all, uh, we're trying to sell properties. We're trying to get the property to actually close. The seller get paid. I get paid. Title transfers, right? That's the name of the game. We're not really interested in taking the property off the market uh, while you, the buyer, can like, you know, just blindly throw crap at your lender to see if they could actually do the deal, right? That's not really advantageous from over here on this standpoint, right? So that's how that's going to work, right? So cash offers would be the best, but I'm not shutting the door on those financed offers, uh, but we're really going to put you guys through uh, the rigors. We're going to be asking your lender a lot of questions, making sure they're a lender that can handle this, okay? That's how we do it. Oh, by the way, last thing. It's also, it's in Elyria, Ohio. I, I don't know if I mentioned that. I probably mentioned it. Uh, but what I love about Elyria is Elyria, folks, uh, in the Cleveland market, it's like half hour away from Cleveland. You don't got to deal with those pesky lead certification laws that the city of Cleveland is making you deal with, right? So I really do like this property for quite a bit of things, right? We talked about the layout and whatnot of the duplex and the non-shared lawn that's all great but another thing that should not go without saying is the fact that it's actually located in Elyria instead of Cleveland proper now if you're coming to us a lot of people come to Holton Wise TV from places like you know anywhere in California New York New Jersey a bunch of super landlord friendly or uh, anti-landlord areas right super tenant friendly areas right so if you're coming from any of those areas uh, Portland that dirty hellhole over there in Oregon uh, if you're coming from any of those places uh, Cleveland is incredibly landlord friendly but if you're actually here in Ohio Ohio, Cleveland is not the most landlord friendly of all of our cities, right? So like Elyria, a lot of you guys have never heard of Elyria, but Elyria is actually a lot more landlord friendly than Cleveland. So I should not end the video without letting you guys know how much value I place on this particular property being in Elyria itself. With all that said, bring in those offers. Let's go. There's like a little unit above the garage too, but there's, it's like, it's screwed shut. And them good old stucco houses. I bet they got the Declaration of Independence in there, boys. <laughs> I'm not getting ticked, so I'm not going back there, but that's the side door to this down unit. 
Now, if this person that lived here wasn't such a piece of shit, this place would be nice as hell. That's funny as fuck. It's hard to see on the camera, but Derek's on his phone. That's all I wanted to point out. Yeah. Presidential campaign posters. We need to do Obama Biden one. Obama. I don't know what that is, but you can have that too if you buy this place. Some kind of X-ray machine. Zenith baby. I bet we plug that in, that bitch probably still fight right up. I bet. And then here's the bathroom. <clears throat> I can't really. The gimbal doesn't like to lean forward much anymore, but. That's human dust. We'll go up. Oh, now I want to do that thing where it doesn't want to pan up. There we go. Oh my god, you can come out here and shit right on top of the world. Yeah, what's on my head? Oh. You guys hungry for some chicken? Chicken. Oh, look at that. Oh, you don't see that every day. Oh, I won't zoom in. Those are fucking decomposed chicken wings. There's fucking nothing left of them. Oh, we probably should have brought hazmat suits. Yeah, right. But I bet there's probably a murderer in here right now. Nope. What is this house? What in the hell? Is this like a rage room? Looks like it. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.